Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. This week, Pastor Benny Hinn has been teaching from Ephesians chapter 6 on the importance of utilizing the armor of God in order to wage effective spiritual warfare against the forces of the enemy. On today's program, he concludes his message with an examination of the final piece of the armor from verse 18, the power of prayer. When we get into prayer, we, we receive tremendous authority from heaven because now we partner with God. We've been given access to the throne. Remember that the Word of God now is fully in control of your life because it's already in your mind, heart, you know, walk and talk and <laughs> authority. And that Word now is a sword in your hand to cut the neck of the devils that come against you. You have tremendous power. And as you walk in, your, 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 your heart is exploding with uh, cries unto, unto the Lord. And your prayer be becomes tremendous power uh, is in it because it's connecting you to God's mind, to God's will. You literally become a partner with His plan. Now remember though, this is very important. Uh, when we pray, before we even utter a word, we must confess our sin. Because the Bible says... In Psalm 66, 18, if I regard the iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't even hear me. So I got to make sure my, my, my heart is clean. Well, how do I get it clean? The Word. The Word will purify my heart and soul. I've hid your Word in my heart that I won't sin against you, Lord. So when the Word is in, everything is cleaned up in my life. Yeah. Psalm 119 says, when the Word is in me, iniquity is far from me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. When the word is in, iniquity is gone. It's far from me. It's not there. And the Bible goes on to say that when I pray, I have to understand that obedience is very key here. Proverbs 28 verse 9 says very clearly that God will not hear me if I'm a, if, if I'm a rebel, if I'm not listening to him. Well, how can you rebel when the word of God is in you? It's impossible. So Proverbs 28, verse 9, great verse, great. He that turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer will become an abomination. So you got to make, make sure your life is clean and make sure you're obedient. And then something else that you, you never think about that can be a hindrance to my prayer life and a hindrance to the power of God that flows from it. And that is if I... Don't listen to the cry of the poor. God won't listen to me. Proverbs 21 verse 13. You know, because God's heart is moved by that. You see? God is moved by the needs of the poor. Proverbs 21 13. It says this, and you ought to know it, I'm sure. Whoever stops his ears at the cry of the poor, he will cry but will not be heard. So think about God. Shutting the door on you because you don't pay attention to the cry of the poor. Ah, oh, I've seen that work so often in my life when I have a need, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll call on the Lord for a need and I'll say, Lord, I'll give so much, uh, you know, to the poor. And every time it touches his heart because it says in Psalm 41, blessed is the man who considers the poor. And it gives us seven promises there, by the way. Would you like to know them? Yes. The seven amazing, you ought to claim that. Every time you give money to the poor, claim those promises. Psalm 41, verse 1, right through verse 3. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. That's first. Number two, the Lord will preserve him. Number three, the Lord will keep him alive. Number four, he will be blessed on the earth. Number five, you will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. Wow, I like that one. Number six, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. And number seven, the Lord will make his bed in his sickness. God's going to heal that man. When you look at this 
these three verses, my, there's such power in them. Considering the poor is so important to God that he'll actually hear your prayer because you are the cry of, a, of the poor. Amazing how God ties it in, you know, with prayer. Now, when you pray and you've done the right things in the sight of God, including listening to the cry of the poor, when you pray, it's important you pray in the right place because most people miss it because they're in the wrong place. You must come to the right place. Don't pray away from the presence of God, where God is. So the Bible says in Exodus 33, 7 through 11, that Moses came to the tabernacle. When it was prayer time, he left his, his tent and came to the Lord's tent. And I'd like to show it to you on the screen, Exodus 33, 7 to 11. That's so powerful. You know, it talks about Moses leaving his house, leaving his wife, leaving his family, and going to where God is. So God cannot hear me if I'm far away. Listen, listen to this. I, I, I heard this years ago. But dear Catherine Kuman would teach on this really strong. She said, always come into proximity so he can touch you. Always come to where God is, where he can reach out and touch you. And the Bible says, they followed him and he healed them. He didn't heal those who did not follow. He only healed those who followed. That woman with issue of blood could have screamed all she wanted had she been way over there. But when she touched that garment, she had to be close enough to touch the garment. Healed. You always get healed if you're close, and you never get healed if you're far. But God wants you in the right place to hear you. And so it says, Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp and, and called it the, the uh, place of the congregation, tabernacle of the congregation. came to pass everyone which saw the Lord had to go there. It was without the camp. They had to walk out from their tents. It took them probably a little while to get there came to pass even when Moses went into the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. Next verse. I love this one. came to pass when Moses entered, the cloud came. See, God was waiting for him to show up. When Moses showed up, God showed up. And stood at the door of the tabernacle, the Lord talked with Moses. I love this. God met him at the door. <laughs> God met him right there at, 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 at the door and said, come on in, Moses, come on in. I love it. Now, the Bible says Moses knew where to meet God. And what did Jesus say in Matthew 6, 6? He said, you want God to hear you? Come into your closet. Get away from distraction. You cannot have, you cannot have human communion and divine communion at the same time. You cannot talk to men and God at the same time. You can only have divine communion if it's only the Lord. Because when you come, you honor Him. You honor Him by not letting somebody else get in there. You honor Him because you're alone. Being alone with God honors Him. That says, Lord, you have my attention. Lord, you have my time. I will never forget. Now, you may think I was rude, but I really wasn't. You may, I may never forget the lady who came for counseling for her marriage in OCC, and we sat in your office. You remember that? I got so mad, I walked out. Her husband and her came in, and, and we were talking. And here, I gave them my time, which is valuable. I gave them, you know, my strength, my whatever. I, 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 I spent of myself to give, give them time. They came, and I said, okay, we'll put everything aside, look and see if we can help you. That dear couple, especially the man, almost drove me nuts. He kept walking in, walking out, walking in, walking out, walking in, walking out. Finally said, hey, brother, did you come to see me or do something else here? He said, well, I had to go make, make a phone call. I said, meeting dismissed. And I walked out. I said, I'm done with you. Because I couldn't handle this guy walking out. I said, that's an and, and insult. 
said, you insult me? You sit here and you're supposed to sit and let, let's fix your problem with your wife and you? And you go out to make a call while we're sitting here waiting for you. And I did sit. I said, I said here we are sitting waiting for your highness. <laughs> and I got a little mad. And boy, when I get mad. Phew. But that dear man was walking in, out, in, out, in, out. And finally I said, I'm done with you. Think what God must feel like. When we talk to him and talk to some, talk him and somebody else. Him and somebody else. Answer the phone. and uh, He's God, people. He's God. Giving him your attention is honoring him. Now, don't begin to pray till God draws you in. Because it says, and this is amazing scripture in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30, verse 21. Oh, uh, one of my favorites, frankly. There's many uh, precious scriptures like this in the Bible. Sweet of prayer, sweet It says this, verse 21. Their nobles shall be of themselves. Their governors will proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near. And he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged, that engaged his heart to approach unto me, says the Lord. In other words, God says, how can you approach me till I cause you to draw near? I will cause him to approach. And Psalm 80 verse 18 says, Quicken me and I'll call on you, Lord. And Psalm 119 verse 50 says that God uses the scripture sometimes to quicken us to call on him. It says in, in Psalm 119 verse 50, it says, with your, with your word, Lord, you've quickened me. Why? You've quickened me to call on you, Lord. Two quickies that are so important when it comes to prayer. Remember I said earlier, you come to the right place. Now you have to come to the right position. And the right position doesn't mean you have to kneel and, or stand. or The right position is mentioned in number 789, one of the most powerful portions. And I'd like to have it on the screen because I want to show people what I'm talking about. Number 789 and then Leviticus 16, 14, 15. Also, I want to show you. When Moses was gone into the tabernacle, now remember, he had to come to the right place. That's the tabernacle. Now he had to be in the right position when he was there. When Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, he heard the voice of one speaking to him from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark from between the two cherubims. And he spake. But where was Moses when God spoke? Ah, this is the key. Leviticus 16, 14 and 15. And he shall take up the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger on the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Next verse. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering. That's for the people. Bring his blood within the veil. And do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock. And sprinkle it on the mercy seat. Now earlier, if we can go back to the earlier scripture so we can tie it together. Number 789 said, when Moses was gone, it says to speak with him. He, he heard the voice of one speaking to him from the mercy seat. That was upon, and that's the key, upon the ark. Upon in the Hebrew gives the idea that Moses was under it. Moses was on his face under the mercy seat. So what is the right position? Under the blood. Hallelujah. 
the blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat. We saw in Leviticus, the mercy seat was covered with blood. And there's Moses kneeling. Kneeling. He wasn't standing. He was on his face before God on the very sand of the tabernacle. Therefore, he was under the blood. You cannot talk to God unless you're under the blood. But not only that, the final thing you, you must be in is the right disposition. Right place, right position, right disposition. These are three major keys given to us in Scripture about seeking God properly. You cannot seek Him properly till you are where He is, the tabernacle, His place. Jesus said, go into your room, be alone, your closet. But then, right position is under the blood. And thirdly, the right disposition, and again that verse, uh, it says that He was ready, ready to hear the voice of God. He was ready to receive what God had to tell Him. When Moses was gone into the tabernacle to speak with him, then he heard the voice of one speaking to him from off the mercy seat. He was ready to listen. He that hath ears, let him hear. So he wasn't ready to talk. He was ready to listen. So when you come into the presence of God, don't start talking quick. First, he wants to talk. And so in Job 5, it says, let your words be few because you're in the presence of God now. He has to talk. You know, when they walk into the presence of the Queen of England, they are told not to talk till she talks. Simply wait till she speaks and then respond to what she says because that's honoring her throne. Well, think about God. Ready to hear. marvelous really and you're so right Michael with what you're playing I feel a tremendous anointing falling already here let us praise praise Jesus now We're standing in His presence on holy ground. In prayer, it's better to have a heart without words than words without a heart. Come in and listen. That is a mighty weapon in your hand. Lift your hands to heaven, saints. Come on. As I walked, as I walked through the door, I sensed his presence. And I knew this was the place where love abound. For this is the temple, Jehovah God. Abide here. We are standing in His presence on holy ground. We are standing.
Father, in Jesus' name, place a holy, mighty desire in your child's heart, the one watching this program today. Place a mighty desire, Lord, for prayer. They might seek you and find you and find their liberty in you, Lord. For you said, seek me with all your heart and you will find me and then I'll bring you out of captivity. Lord God, in Jesus' name, grant that this request be answered for your glory and honor. And Lord, I let me pray for you now that God will heal you if you're sick in the body. Father, in Jesus' name, bring healing to the oppressed, bring healing to the sick. I command that sickness to go in Jesus' glorious name. And God's people said, Amen. And become a partner today and help me take the gospel around the world. Remember, we're on TV throughout the world. And if you're not on our mailing list, please call today. And I, you know, we, we send uh, those of you on our mailing list uh, beautiful teachings often. And if you're not on the mailing list, you're missing it. Make sure to call today the number on the screen. This one here is on the anointing. This one here is on the three realms of prayer. And it's a beautiful teaching that comes to you in the mail so you can sit and read it and keep it somewhere, and give it to a friend and so on. But write me today, Post Office Box 16, 2000, Irving, Texas. A whole lot quicker to just call the number on the screen that's toll free or go online and uh, we'll send you all these lovely teachings in the mail. And yes, sow your seed in the Lord's work today. Remember, when we give to the gospel, we reap a harvest. And it's the gospel, that's the heart of, you know, of it all. You give because you love the Lord and you give because He promised us a harvest and we give because we want to see the gospel spread throughout the world. So, give, so go ahead and sow that seed, call today, help me stay on the air, help me stay current. You that watch me on TBN or other networks, uh, we need your help today to just keep paying our bills on time. Thank you. Bless you. I'll see you again tomorrow for another wonderful program. But I see in the realm of the spirit, I saw a doctor. A doctor walked up to me. When he walked up to me, he put a paper in my hand. On top of the paper, I saw the word fibromyalgia. This is what the Lord is saying to me, that you received a report from the doctor where they told you that you had fibromyalgia. But the Spirit of the Lord said, this night, you're completely healed by the power of God. Was he right? Right on, she says. Somebody gave you a letter that said fibromyalgia. Huh? Diagnosis uh, was 14 years ago, and I've been dealing with it off and on. And tonight, um, when you, actually when you're reading the word, I just felt this heat cover my whole body. See, when we talk about Jesus, he always shows up. <laughs> Glory. Praise God. Well, ask she of the Lord reign in the time of the latter rain. That's what the Lord is telling me to tell you. Ask for rain. You know who I am. I don't have to introduce myself to you. Pastor Benny asked me to come here and just talk to you just for a moment to release a word into your life, not because I'm special and great, but there's a supernatural grace upon my life to release you into a blessed place. I've seen it all over the country. I, I, I've seen people healed and delivered and set free. I mean, I've seen notable miracles take place in people's life, and it actually uh, blew my mind. I've seen God do it time and time again all because they obeyed one simple instruction that the Lord laid upon my heart for me to give them. I'm no magician. I have no magic powers. All I have is a word from the Lord. His word can change you. Psalm 105, 19, until the time that his word came. Joseph was in a pit until his word came. I want to let you know today, I don't care what you're going through and what's presently coming against you. God can do anything but fail. The God you serve is a miracle worker. And can I tell you that uh, if you would just obey him and do what he says, he'll release miracles in your life. When Pastor Benny asked me to do this, the Lord said to me, he said, uh, tell the people to ask ye of the Lord reign in the time of the latter reign. God's about to reign on you. 
and he's going to send the latter rain and the former rain at the same time. You know, he did that because, because of sin and disobedience, the enemy came in and took things from them. They lost some stuff. So because they lost all of that stuff, they needed extra rain for the, the, the crops to grow. They needed extra rain. God said, I'm about to send you extra rain. <laughs> this is going to be a season where he's just getting ready to rain on your life like you've never seen it before. I mean, rain is about to come on you, on your business, on your life, on your ministry, on your mind. You know, we used to sing a song in church that said, rain, Holy Spirit, rain on me. Thank you, sister named Renita Mojo wrote that song. Touch my mind, touch my heart, touch my soul, every part. Holy Spirit, rain on me. God's about to rain on you. And let me tell you, when he rains, you receive the miracle. Now, this is what I want you to do because I, I want you to do this. I don't want you to hesitate. I just want you to follow this instruction because you've seen it time and time again. One word from God can change your life. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to honor God today with a seed. What kind of seed, Prophet Karn? I'm going to tell you. I just want you to honor God with a seed of $30. What is that for? I'm going to decree. I'm getting ready to pray for you that the next 30 days, because remember now, he said, ask of the Lord, latter rain in the time of rain. He's going to send the latter rain, the former rain in the, in the first month, the scripture said. So I want to pray that the next 30 days, which involves a month, will be 30 days of unusual favor. Just something I'm going to believe God for. I'm going to connect with you. You're not sowing for a miracle because you can't afford one, but you're giving in faith, believing God for the furtherance of the gospel. How shall they preach except they be sent? So you're sowing the seed for the furtherance of the gospel. People are being healed. We don't want pastor worried about anything. We want people to be able to, him to be able to just travel around the world and people get healed and saved because we're in a dangerous hour. Father, I thank you for those 500 people that are watching me that's going to sow that seed in faith, believing you for a miracle, that the next 30 days will be 30 days of uncommon supernatural favor. Blow their mind, yay, beyond their expectation in Jesus' name. Obey God. I got a witness in my spirit about it. Do it now. By the power of God, that anointing is flowing. Does it? I'm on the screen. Go to the website. There's an address. Mail it in if you have to. But sow that seed in faith, believing God for a miracle. Because God told me, I'm getting ready to rain on you and your life. And what the enemy has meant for bad is turning for your good. God bless you. 